to minimize RSS, uh, derive, derive those two partial derivatives, partial derivative to alpha, partial derivative to beta, set to be zero, so that solve those two equations, get all our alpha hat or beta hat, right? It should be exactly the same as, uh, you know, you can always find an answer in my lecture notes. But I, I would suggest you try by yourself first, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, just manually write down in a piece of paper. Uh, once you derive that one, so that you can you can either scan it or take a picture, upload to Canvas. You don't have to type. You don't have to type. Actually, manually written will be even better because uh, uh, you can you can practice better than you know manually write down this. Uh, <laughs> proof. Yeah. You can use pencil so that uh, they don't make mistake. It's easier to <laughs> to correct, right? So that's the first proof. Second proof is uh, starting from this shorthand notation, beta hat is uh, W I Y I, starting from this formula uh, where, where W I, little x i, these are given. And all three properties and four assumptions are given as proof these four stuff. First of all, derive expectation and answer a proof uh, and answer beta hat unbiased or not. And of course, from the first uh, part, then you derive, you're supposed to derive expectation beta hat is true beta, right? So that answer right here, beta hat should be, it is unbiased. There's no bias at all, right? Part C, derive the variance, just like I showed you in class, right? <laughs> derive the variance, variance beta hat. And based on variance beta hat, answer, is that consistent or not? Make sure, of course, you need answer by because of theorems, so, so that our bias shrinks to zero, our variance shrinks to zero, right? So that based on the from the theorem, so that we know it is consistent, right? Right here, make sure you answer everything. Where does it come from? Where, why is consistent, right? right? Because we showed bias shrinks to zero, variance shrinks to zero, and also they will derive those expectations, they will derive those variance. Make sure, make sure you label, you know, from each step, you label, you know, I use the assumption number one, I use the problem number two, so on so forth. So that, uh, you know, from each line, you know, where do they come from? Otherwise, uh, uh, by the way, why we want to introduce these uh, proofs? Later on, later on, when we, uh, when we d discuss those assumptions, actually, you can always go back to the proof right here. You can see from, for example, when we derive the variance, we used, for example, when we derive the variance, when we derive the variance, we use assumption two, assumption three, assumption four, right? So that later on, if, for example, assumption two or assumption three is not true, for example, variance, variance of ui is not a constant sigma square anymore then immediately you know you know from here to here it's not simply sigma square anymore right you have to you know you have to modify this so that a variance is not simply a, you know <laughs> this anymore right so that uh, the consistency you know variance will be affected similarly the then you derive unbiasedness see we only used assumption one assumption four right so that Actually, at this moment, we already know, for example, assumption two only affects the variance, right? <laughs> assumption two doesn't affect the form, you know, formula expectation at all. In other words, later on, suppose the assumption two or assumption three has been violated. Then actually, our conclusion right here, unbiasedness or not, actually not affected at all. Right, because when we de derive this, we only use assumption one, assumption four. When we derive expectation, right? So unbiasedness is actually not affected by assumption two, assumption three. That's why I want you guys to 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 know this proof, not simply <laughs> copy my notes, but know each line. You know, where did I use assumption two? Where did I use assumption four? So on and so forth. Where did I use a property number one, number two? That's that's the stuff I want to know. So that's why later on, later on, we may not have time to learn every single estimator. But later on, when you see a very fancy, you know, estimator, something you've never seen before, actually always check out this assumption, always check out expectation, variance, 
you know, which assumption we use to derive that one. You can figure out the conclusion immediately. That's the reason why for graduate level econometrics courses, we, we require these proofs. <laughs> Question. Yes. Yeah. It will be also, you know, uh, written in the exam, you know, hand written right on a piece of paper and scan that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because this course, uh, we're going to use a lot of those uh, formulas, equations. I I won't ask you guys to to type those five formulas during exam. It's going to take too much time. So <laughs> not everybody, you know, is good at typing those formulas, equations, right? So <laughs> handwritten those, uh, <laughs> they'll be perfectly fine. Uh, that's the homework. Uh, Let's very quickly talk about